don't want to go off the side of that. It's going to hurt a lot. <laughs> no knobbies. Don't use the front brake. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, and like real steep drop-offs here. And bad news rocks. Overheat my rear brake and I won't have a brake. Ugh. We've got a campsite that's not too far away. It's, uh, oh, Jesus, he just lost his fucking windshield. That was a hard hit right there, kids. Loose. That bump was pretty severe. Oh, Did God. that bust? Oh, th this broke. Oh, sh Oh, sh Duct tape. Yeah, here's the VLA. Nice, four miles. And that is, oh, that's what he's pointing at. These are the uh, the satellite dishes. Ugh. All right, bump. Yeah, there we go. Now I can look at it. Cool. I want to go off the road. Neat. Now I've seen the VLA, or part of it. Continental Divide, elevation 7796. Crossing the Continental Divide on the PCX 150. Wow, look at that off to the left. That's beautiful. Five fifty seven. Five fifty seven AM ball. Five fifty seven. It's chilly this morning. Probably fifty. Oh. Neil's over there packing up already. Getting into his cannonball routine. I got out way too much stuff last night, so I'm going to have a lot of repacking to do. I decided to uh, throw the tarp over the hammock last night because it was a little windy and you get uh, a little bit of a windbreak having the uh, tarp over the top. It helps you retain a little bit of heat inside the hammock. Not a lot, but a little. When it gets down into the 50s, any little bit extra insulation helps. So we've got another slow day, or short day ahead of us today. 216 miles, I think, is what Neil said, uh, to the next campsite. So, not a long, hard day. What'd you say to the next campsite? 216? 200? 270, 280. Oh, 270. Oh, I thought you said 216, not 270. So, almost 300 miles. Not bad. We're going to get to uh, Globe, Arizona. Oh, we should be meeting Doug there tonight. Uh, he got out of Joplin, Missouri yesterday, made it pretty far through Texas, and uh, had to stop for a while for a nasty thunderstorm, and then uh, sent us a, a picture showing after the rain uh, went through, and there's this really nice rainbow. I'll throw that in here. Uh, it was a cool photo. And then he was getting back on the road, and I don't know how far he was going to push through or where he was going to stay last night. But uh, he'll have another, you know, probably three, four hundred miles uh, today, just like we do, to get over to Globe. Getting your cannonball routine going, huh? 
<laughs> breaking it down first thing in the morning. Let's go. I got a, 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 a coffee. Yeah, I heard you making the coffee. Coffee, man. Yeah, yeah, I grabbed some. I heard you making it. I'm an opportunist. I saw it. I took it. <clears throat> all right. Uh, good morning, all. It is, uh, what is today? Wednesday? Yeah. Wednesday. Wednesday. We are leaving uh, our campsite in Socorro, New Mexico, up here at 7,000 feet in the mountains. Uh, I hung a hammock in the trees over there. I don't think I caught any still pictures of it, but I got it on video last night. Uh, sitting around the campsite, goofing off. Uh, had a little bit of a fire in the fire pit there behind the trees. Cleaned up all of our mess, and uh, we're getting out kind of a leisurely pace this morning because uh, I had so much repacking to do. I took everything off the bike last night, and I was digging for camera stuff and making a mess. Anyway, uh, I recorded the ride coming in last night, uh, I hope, and uh, now we're definitely going to record this show going down because it's very steep, very rocky. Ow, and I've got something eating my ear. Um, yeah, we're going we're gonna to hope for the best here. So we got fully loaded scoots. He's got a trailer, and... Uh, this is going to be entertaining, and I've got to figure out how to get this thing off of the stand uphill. This is going to be a trick, and it's really uphill. You probably can't appreciate the grade here. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, okay, rear brake. Hard pinch. Don't fall over. There we go. Okay, here we go. Check out the old bug. That's gorgeous. 72, I think he said it was. And I'm going to be training and wheeling it with my feet off the sides. Call me a wuss. I don't care. I want to dab a foot and keep this thing from going down. All right. Here's Neil. He's concerned. Because <laughs> uh, can't use front brake on this stuff. Ready? Yeah. Give it a shot. Coming up here, we didn't know what to expect. And he didn't... Uh, he didn't expect it to be quite as rocky as it is. It's uh, it's pretty rough. <laughs> it's uh, ADV trail, uh, Jeep path kind of stuff. So it's a rear brake all the way. And there are some massive chunky rocks in here. I scraped my undercarriage, you know, under plastics. I'm surprised he didn't ground out his trailer on a few of them. It's pretty rocky in here, and these tires skate all over the place. Wiggle left, right, left, right, left, right. I don't want to go off the side of that. It's going to hurt a lot. <laughs> no knobbies. Don't use the front brake. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, and like real steep drop-offs here. And bad news rocks. Overheat my rear brake, and I won't have a brake. Ugh. He's doing good with that trailer so far. This is where it gets sketchy AF. Because the front tire skips sideways over these rocks. and You have no control of it. Yeah, I am training wheeling. He's got a little wider tires on that. I think they probably do better on this. He's doing good though. Ugh. We're heading for some really nasty <coughs> here in a minute, if, as I remember. First couple of these getting on this road, I was uh, wondering if I was going to stay upright because I bounced off of one and the front wheel skipped about six inches sideways. About lost it. Yeah, right down here. This is crazy. Four inch, five inch stones in here. All right, made it. And I think you're back to pavement. Yep. Hey, we made it. Ugh, wasn't as bad as we thought it might be. Going up was pretty sketchy. A lot of times you'll go up those things uh, and they're, you know, difficult and you manage to muddle through it, but you're staying on the throttle all the time. And uh, you can modulate the going up a whole lot better than you can modulate the going down. Because <laughs> you can't rely on that front brake too much. And the rear brake, if you're heavy, you just end up dragging and sliding and, you know, you get uh, too much momentum and you're in trouble. But it worked out. So we're doing 290, 200, no, 270, I think he said. 270 miles to get to a Globe, Arizona today. We'll meet up with Doug and uh, 
not sure where the campsite is. Uh, Neil picked all these out. I'm just uh, along as a tourist here, riding his coattails. Should have plenty of time. We're estimating that we'll get in there Friday around noon. You know, that'll give us the rest of the day to do what we need to do. And then uh, we've got a campsite that's not too far away. It's, uh, oh, Jesus, he just lost his windshield. That was a hard hit right there, kids. Ugh. Hopefully it's just a clip-on issue and not a complete damage and destruction. This came loose. That bump was pretty severe. Oh. Did that bust? Oh, th this broke. Oh, sh**. Oh, sh**. Yeah, it was the uh, the little the holes in there that caused it to oh, well. perforate. Oop, you got your sand down here, yeah, okay? So I just need to kind of grind it. Now nah, I think I'm gonna try the duct tape, and then after the duct tape, I'm gonna just grind it right here. There you go. All right. Cool. Magdalena fault. I'm gonna go read the sign over here. Magdalena Mountains. Okay, so that tells me where we are. Uh, to the west, you're taught by South Baldy at 10,700 feet. Wow. I wonder where that one is in the range. 10,700. That's up there, boys. La Gencia Plain to the east is bisected by Water Canyon. Three miles below this mark. Three miles below this marker. Holy Begiminis. Three. How is that? Three miles. That would be 15,000 feet. Uh, I think they're, they're mis, misquoting there. Can't be. It would be below sea level, like way below, like lower than Death Valley low. <laughs> hey, gravel, gravel, going sideways. Whoa. Off we go. New Mexico Tech Terra site. I wanted to go to White Sands while we were out here, and I just didn't. We didn't have it in the cards. Not for our travel plans this time. I've never been out to the, the missile site. It'll be interesting. Take a look at our elevation. We are at 6,060 feet. So we came down almost 1,000 feet from where we were at the campsite. Didn't feel like that much of a descent, but I guess it was. We got we were at 6,900 and something, 6,970, I don't remember what it was, just shy of 7,000 feet. Woo. Uphill against the wind. Let the pain begin. 49. Neil has stayed out ahead of me. I've been pretty much full throttle this whole time. I haven't let out of it. He got out ahead of me and stayed out. I haven't been able to catch him. Probably catch him here because of the weight going up the hill. 47. And this is nothing. <laughs> if we get into the Rockies, it's going to change real quick. We'll be stuck at about 30, 35. Which, surprisingly, isn't much faster than the Cubs were doing pulling the trailers. Uh, Adrian and I were pretty consistently able to pull somewhere between 27 and 33 up most of the really, really steep inclines. Uh, you know, we just shove it in second gear and pin the throttle and let it go. And if we started getting up near a red line, we would back out of the throttle a tiny bit. That way we wouldn't be bumping off the rev limiter or whatever, but we'd get the engine up in its peak power range and just leave it there. And whatever speed we could get with that, that's what we would stay with. Because as soon as we would try to change up a gear, that was too tall and the engine would bog down and we'd start losing speed. So we just have to find the, the optimum speed and ascent. Uh, Great, and stay with it. We only had a couple of problems with the uh, faster traffic behind us getting annoyed, but you know, people that live out in the mountains kind of get used to it because you have uh, large trucks, you know, semis and stuff that go up those big grades and uh, they just can't pull it. You know, they're loaded down 80,000 pounds or whatever, and uh, the best they're able to pull going uphill is maybe 30 miles an hour sometimes. So. We're right there at that speed. These scooters are probably going to be the same. People that rode the ADV 150s uh, in last year's or you know, 21 Cannonball, they said that going up a lot of the mountain passes, they were stuck at about 30, 32. That's all they could pull. 
which surprised me, but you know, now that I'm experiencing it, yeah, it makes sense. I figured the, the PCX would have more oomph because of the power discrepancy, but it really boils down to the gearing uh, on the Cub, being able to manually select the gear versus the CVT, you know, you're just stuck with whatever it's gonna give you. What's that? Yeah, it's windy. I was full throttle the whole time. I could, I was just barely, barely gaining on you because you got that lead on me early. I'm gonna adjust this helmet because the speaker is eating my ear. So I'm 895 miles into my trip, almost 896. Uh, we didn't cover very many miles yesterday, barely 200. Uh, I did 670 or six something like that, getting out to uh, Roswell on the first day. I could have gone further had I not ran out of gas. I could have trekked on a. I think I could have done an iron butt, done a thousand miler that day. I got out early enough. Oop, side stand. <laughs> Pushing the start button. Oh shit, my battery's dead. No, you left the side stand down, dopey. Yeah, he's pointing at all this. It's amazing. Yep, big rim out here. This looks like that one area in the Great Basin that Adrian and I were riding through. The road was absolutely laser straight all the way to the horizon. Probably 60 miles, just arrow straight. Clipping along pretty easy here, you know, 60-ish. Get over to those mountains, it's not gonna be the case. Yeah, here's the VLA, nice four miles. And that is, oh, that's what he's pointing at. These are the uh, the satellite dishes. I thought he was pointing at the, uh, the mountain ridge. No, this is the VLA out here, uh, very large array. So all these uh, little dots, I don't know if you can see them very well on the camera, but those are uh, those are radio towers there. VLA rest site, two miles. Now we get a closer view of this one. It's closer up to the road. Pretty cool. I want to look at the. Uh, uh, all right, bump. Yeah, there we go. Now I can look at it. Cool. I want to go off the road. VLA. I don't see any, oh yeah, there's one way out there. Okay, so that line goes way the hell down that way. It goes way off this way. I'd like to see an aerial view, if it's an X or what kind of pattern they've got there. Markers. Oh. Anyway, neat. Now I've seen the VLA, or part of it. <laughs> He's ducking down, trying to get his head, his helmet behind his uh, GPS mount as a windbreak. I don't know, maybe he's trying to do a top speed run. And his next few hundred miles are going to suck until he gets that uh, windshield fixed. Properly sized windscreen is absolutely crucial to these long distance rides. I've done it on a naked bike, coast to coast, more than once. I don't recommend it. Don't recommend it at all. You just get beat to sh**. The wind is brutal, especially when you get in gusty or inconsistent winds. How was that? Ran something over. Uh, I hope it wasn't something off his bike. Trying to flag him with my brights. Let's see if he sees me. Wanted to pull over. We'll check the the bag. I can't catch him in full throttle. I didn't take a look at my odometer. Let's say two miles ago, 64.9. If I can catch him, which doesn't seem like it's going to happen, because we are into a headwind here. Uh, Nah, he's walking away from me. 
he's still gaining ground, so he's got more top end than I've got. Yeah, he's walking away good. He's got a quarter mile on me, getting on about a half mile now almost. Yeah, he's over a mile out now. I'm just gonna conserve fuel. Yeah, he's just leaving me for dead. He's gone. A mile and a half out. Shows my ETA getting into Globe, Arizona. It's 215 miles. Uh, 1153 if I continue this pace, but there'll be at least uh, one fuel stop, probably two. So I figure 1230-ish. Neil might be able to make the whole run without stopping. So running full tilt this morning, I'm getting 88.5 indicated. Pretty much full throttle the whole time. I've backed out of it maybe, you know, 10% for a few miles, but for the most part, it's just sitting wide open. I'm not worried about being right up near red line because I'm nowhere near that. I don't, uh, I don't get near the rev limiter. 78 miles an hour is where I felt the rev limiter kind of bump once or twice, but that's downhill with the wind behind me and all that. So wide open throttle at 60, 65, whatever. Nah, nowhere near red line. So let it run. It's getting 88 indicated. So means I've got just shy of 400 mile range. 370 is my uh, bingo fuel. 360 is bingo fuel. 380, 390 is maximum. I'm thinking I might stop and put on my over jacket because I am pretty chilly. Ooh, big drop off. Ooh. While I'm stopped here, I think I'll go ahead and pour off some of this fuel that's in the top container and redistribute load. Neil's a couple miles out ahead of me already and he's still pulling, so let him go. He said he was going to stop in Sholo somewhere, I think, to get windshield parts, but it's not going to do him any good if he lost that little windshield on the road back there 40 miles back. Cap is always in the way. Oh, got it just a little too late. Spilled some. And that was uh, half of this, so that's good. Ah, oh, the smell of petrol in the morning. Continental Divide, elevation 7796. I'm reading 7840. Crossing the Continental Divide on a PCX 150. Or Quasi's Peruvian pack mule. <laughs> All the crap I've got on here. Pioneer, Pi Town, New Mexico. Eh? Huh? Eh? I was getting ready to head that way. Oh, I stopped to uh, pour off some of this fuel. That's what I was stopping here for, is you could pull Oh, okay. You, you were two miles out ahead of me, so I just pulled off. I had to put on my over jacket, too. I was getting cold. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I couldn't catch up. I was, I was flat out the whole time. I could never catch up. I, well, here was my... 
going to jump off from it? I was flashing my lights at you for a while. I was concerned that maybe you lost this. You ran over something in the road back there. It was white plastic or something, and plastic went shattering all over the road behind you. Uh, so I was flashing my lights at you for like five minutes. I couldn't catch you, but oh well. I was hoping that that thing was still attached. So we just crossed the Continental Divide back there. Did you see the sign? It said 77 something, but I looked at my GPS here and the elevation was like 100 feet different, so I don't know. Picture opportunity. Huh? Quasimodo is about another half hour down the road. Oh, I didn't notice that. I saw something quasi something. Yeah, yeah. so I think we'll stop there. I'm going to stick a donut in my face or something, and then we'll merit a solo. So you already did get So I'm now 1,023 miles into the trip. I need to check my oil again when we land today, just to make sure it hasn't uh, consumed anything or changed level. I think it's good. Uh, I checked it yesterday morning at whatever it was, 800 miles and change, 900 miles, wherever that was, and uh, it's still right where I left it. Let's see where we are on the map. I have no clue where we are. I'm just going to zoom it out and take a look, and I haven't set this thing to north up yet. I need to do that. Mm -hmm. oh, there we are. We're going that way. Zoom it out. Zoom it out. Oh, and I can see the Cannonball Run line on there. That that track right there, that is uh, trick tracks for the Cannonball Run, I believe. 126 miles. So a little over two hours. I'm going to have to stop for another fuel stop in a while. I uh, stopped earlier and offloaded a, about a gallon or so of this uh, reserve tank into the lower tank to redistribute weight. Keep it from leaking on my leg as it uh, heats up in the day. Windy out here. Crosswinds, next seven miles. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> A little late on that. Move that mile, or move that sign back there about seven miles. Wow, that's gorgeous. Wow. That's a 3D zoom up effect. wasn't recording earlier and there was another one of those where you come up over a hill and it's just this huge open valley below and you're zooming in on it. That was awesome looking. Getting a pretty good uh, fuel economy number today. I don't know if that shows up on camera. 92.5 is what I've run so far on this uh, punishment today. Pretty much wide up and throttle most of the day. some wind holy <laughs> kids oh my god that's 50 mile an hour crosswind right there what the hell is that all right so we're uh, we're now entering show low and we're just getting beat up by wind it is really windy out here you can see these flags just ripping it's 25 steady gusts probably above 35 it's uh, it's nuts lateral so we're really getting hammered but uh, we've made it this far so I think Neil's probably gonna stop up here front hardware store and uh, then we've got oh I don't know another hundred miles or so to go maybe not quite a hundred miles to get to uh, globe Arizona and I haven't noticed if we passed into Arizona yet I don't know where we are Sholo New Mexico Sholo Arizona what do we got Sholo, I don't know. So we're all fueled up. Uh, Neil grabbed a six pack of beer and uh, we are ready to go out to the campsite, but we're going to have to uh, navigate this and we're going against a 25, almost 30 mile an hour headwind here uphill. It's going to be fun accelerating up. 
It is brutally windy out here today. I wonder if it's like this all the time here. So I'm noticing that the PCX is really struggling getting off the line again. It doesn't feel as bad as when the sliders flipped in there like they did before. Uh, but it's just, I don't know, it, it's not getting off the line good. Uh, up here, you know, at altitude it has less power, obviously, you know, a couple of horsepower down or something like that. But I'm convinced that it's that contra spring in the rear that's causing all my headaches. So I don't know, I might pull this thing apart again before the cannonball starts on Sunday. And I might put the 12 gram sliders in there just to give myself a fighting chance for climbing hills and you know accelerating away from stops and all that because with as much weight as I have on here it's pretty labored getting off the line like up that hill right back there that was full throttle and it just goes huh, and it, it bogs down and shudders a lot before it takes off which has been kind of the situation with this thing for a long time uh, so it's got to be the contra spring because that's the only thing that hasn't been changed and it's perfectly logical. I mean, it's just, it's a relatively easy fix. I just don't have one of those springs. So, uh, I could ask some of the, uh, uh, the uh, Vespa guys, uh, the, the mechanic shop with the Molossi stuff, uh, if they've got any springs that might work on this, I don't know. Could be worth a shot. Yeah. <laughs> this little PCX gets blown all over the lane. Good stuff. This thing is affected by crosswinds a lot more with all the stuff I have on the back seat piled up high as it is. Four miles. Wow, look at that off to the left. That's beautiful. Look through. 
uphill. Cool. Oh yeah, this is a great photo op right here. I'm trying to decide if I want to be behind it. Oh man, look at that canyon. It's way down there. Or in front of it. Behind it is best. Cool. Man, it's friggin' hot. It's about 100 degrees right here, at least. <laughs> watch, watch that first step. It's a doozy. Yes, it is. Kathump, kathump, ka 400 feet straight down. Matthew M. Teschner. Becker Butte Overlook. Cool. Shutter, shutter, shutter. Yeah, that is a long way down. Ho, ho, ho. Little mini Grand Canyon here. Okay. Bottom of the game. Ugh. Back up we go.
runaway. <laughs> he was going to go up the runaway truck ramp. He's looking for somewhere to park. For a picture. <laughs> Pull into the runaway ramp. That could be bad. <laughs> right when the truck comes through. Son of a... I'm going to pull over there by the rim. It looks like a spot you could drive up there and park, you know? Yeah. <laughs> It'd be just our luck. A runaway truck could come through there right then. <laughs> oh, I don't want to be parking in there. No. Not a good spot. I think there might be one more spot a little further up that looks down on that where that bridge went across and all that. Mm hmm So, eh, maybe one more stop. Get a couple shots. We'll run up a little further. Nothing else. We'll keep going. We're not the slowest thing out here today. <laughs> These must be fully loaded. Is this it? Jones Water Campground. This is it. Huh. I thought we had a ways to go yet. Well, all right. <laughs> Listen to that screen. You can see it bouncing like crazy. Got to tighten that thing up. Ugh. Stay over here, Scoot. Ugh. That hole.
campsite's far enough away off the highway so we don't hear that all night. We're gonna find out. Uh, dust in the eyeballs. better. Kind of. Yeah, let's put it in the center stand. Hey, if nothing else, there's a spot right here. Wait. <laughs> What's that? If nothing else, there's a spot right here. Yeah, well, we can figure out how uh, how deep it is. I'd like to get some more shade, yeah. more tree. Hang the hammock again tonight. Yeah, go for a walk. See what's down. All right, let's go scout it out. Camera. Hello, world. <laughs> exactly. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to our next uh, camp in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, we're north of about 20 mo miles north of Globe. Yeah, but, we're in um, a hole. There is no cell coverage out here, not even a bar. It's about time for a change of clothes. What am I, three days out? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday? Today's Wednesday, right? It is Wednesday. I'm losing track. I'm four days in the same clothes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's definitely time for a change of socks and uh, undershorts, I think. We'll have to make a trek up to the road to check in with... Uh, Doug, did you give him the GPS coordinates for you? Okay. Right. Same ones I followed. Hold on. Beer. Yeah, you drink your beer here. I haven't stopped moving. It's just sitting here, sitting here getting flat. I'm getting real close to being happy though, so. All right. Where is that there? It's right here. Right in front of your helmet. My light and everything I've got going on. You just abandoned the whole task. Squirrel. <laughs> So I'm gonna pull my filters because I'm ready for that, and then I'll do that, and I'll be done with that, and I'll put them back in, and that will okay. I'll stop for a drink. Okay, go here, beer. Where's my stool? I need my working stool. Behind the tires. Probably lined it up right, right on the wall. Did you put it under something? Paint paint today for everything. It's not under that. I'm not accustomed to seeing it rolled up so I don't know what side of it is. In your hand? Picked it up. And we got these tools. Said I'm gonna go do this. Now all I need is my stool. You looking for your glasses? Damn. You're on your face? <laughs> Sometimes, man. <laughs> just look around and go, look, did I say that? <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're going to need uh, much in the way of insulation tonight. Nope. It's pretty toasty. Mm. You never know until it's 2 in the morning. True. Cold wind starts blowing through, and you start rethinking, really "Oh shit, maybe I should have put the fly on the turn." And that's too cold to go get that. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get up. Of the straps and you know, the rough 
walk of the trees. That's uh, that's a little under 15 feet, probably 12, 13 feet. 15 to 18 feet is usually perfect because the hammocks are typically 10 feet long. So, you know, and that's full fabric length. Uh, so when you've got a six foot tall person in it, you've got a couple feet on each end for your head feet and all that. And then you end up with about three feet of strap on each side. So, yep. <clears throat> Maybe you'll give me one of them things one of these days. Man, they, they work great. And you don't have any pressure points, that's the greatest thing about it. Once you learn to sleep in them correctly, you, know, you don't sleep straight. You sleep a little bit diagonal, so you get laid out flat, but then curled into a banana. Good. I gotta set my camp up, don't you? I'm using the first one, but... Uh, well, I'm oh. cheating. I'm just getting it done early. Oh, it's quick. Oh, it's weird. Down. Yeah, you went scooter maintenance route. Yeah. I had issues, man. I had to deal with it. And then I'm working on it. Uh, just give me that shoot. Just pulled it out of the thing. Literally. Oh, right here. Okay. So Doug just arrived. Doug made it in. Yeah. He found us without trouble. Awesome. Yeah, that ride was great, wasn't it? it was awesome.